Hi there, this is Donna Kozik. I'm the founder of MyBigBusinessCard.com and creator and leader of the original Write a Book in a Weekend program. And this is Give Me 200 Words. And uh, we're going to uh, discuss, first of all, one of my writing pieces and then also a writing piece from someone who submitted for this week. Uh, and then I'm going to give you next week's props. So we're gonna have a lot of fun and I'm gonna to look to get it done in about 20 minutes. So I also, as part of this, I like to talk about ways that you can micro publish or promote yourself uh, because a lot of my authors, a lot of my clients are business owners and uh, coaches, consultants, and they want to grow their business. And so uh, one thing I'm focusing on myself and I'm gonna share with you today is how your Facebook page is actually like what I'm calling a living blog. Um, maybe that's not quite uh, the right term for it, but really uh, when you think about it, your whole audience is right there. Uh, on Facebook, if you're growing your friends list and your connections list, you do not have to drive them anywhere to see your posts, to see your videos, to see your photos, or anything like that. So you can actually put that right on Facebook. And I'm really starting to embrace this and share uh, on my personal page. This isn't even a business page. On my personal page, I'm sharing more about my business, my main business of being a book writing coach, my side business of being a health coach, and uh, also just interacting with people and inspiring people because really I think that's what it's all about, right? So I wanted to share uh, with you, uh, uh, first of all, this uh, image that I put on Facebook and then what I wrote uh, underneath it or above it. And then I will, uh, I'm going to kind of uh, give my own analysis to my piece and uh, show you some writing tips and the way that I think about writing. So this was the quote, doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. And I just did a Google search for inspirational quotes and this came up. Uh, if I used another one from this uh, where this came from though, I would crop it a little bit because when it was on my Facebook page, like you could barely read, it looked kind of like this. You could barely see the, wait, no, it looked like this. You could barely see the word failure and, um, and maybe it was like that. So I'd want everybody to read the whole quote uh, and they really wouldn't be able to do that unless they clicked on it. So that was a little um, note that I had for myself. So here's what I wrote. And this is actually, uh, it's a little soft promo for what we're doing now with Give Me 200 Words. So uh, above the quote, I wrote, so true, referring to that doubt killing dreams. Uh, so true, as a mentor of mine says, let that stuff go, except he doesn't say stuff. So my mentor says, shit. And uh, I'm not too much into swearing. It just kind of sounds funny when I do it. I, I kind of sound like a third grader or something. So I just make it, at, it's just not me. Uh, but at the same time, I kind of like to uh, hint at it, you know, or something. So that's why um, I put that, except he doesn't say stuff and he doesn't when he, when he talks. So then I, I go on. I was talking with a newer client yesterday who was worried about writing her book because she was worried, oh, I used the same word twice in that sentence. I, I, would, I would change that um, if I was gonna publish this somewhere else. Uh, she was worried, terrified actually, about what comes after the book. Not just the website, but coaching programs, email sequences, the list was just getting started for her. And uh, I don't know if this person is listening uh, to this video or, or here with me live now, uh, but I, I just want to say, you know, I'm just kind of using this as an example and just so you know, uh, this doesn't happen or this happens all the time and it's, it's nothing to be, you know, feel guilty or ashamed about or anything like that. No judgments here at all. So what was happening is, so I wrote, she, not just a website, but she was uh, about coaching programs, email sequences, the list was just getting started for her. So I put this in here to, so people who are reading this would recognize themselves, especially people who are in my ideal audience. I work with probably 70 to 80% are coaches who are in my program. And then we've been talking lately about email sequences. So that is sending out a signal to my ideal audience. That's why I put that in there. 
So then I put, I interrupted before she could build any momentum. First, you write the book, you draft it, then you show it to one person, me. I'll point out the good and what needs to be improved because I don't let my authors publish junk. Then you revise a little more. All this will make the book better and make your belief in it stronger. Then you finish it. Then you see how it's good and you'll want to share your message with others through websites, webinars, and all that. Or you can just put a box of your newly published books in the closet and move on to your next thing. Up to you. It's always your decision about what you want to do. So this paragraph, I took a little while to write this one. And first, I wanted to show my own coaching skills. So, but I didn't want to come off as rude. So, but I have to, in this area, especially if you're, if you're a coach yourself, you ever experienced this where people can kind of go into some kind of negative vortex about all of this. And I try to stop that as soon as possible because it's just not doing any good building up that momentum, momentum like a tornado about things that they don't know. So that's why I interrupted before she could build any momentum. So I wanna get that first. And then I laid out this dialogue. It's pretty much what I said uh, when I was writing this. I really worked on this because sometimes I say, I, I point out the good, the bad, and the ugly. But not, that's not really what I do because there's usually so much more good. And then what I, I never call anything bad. I say, well, here's what you could do instead. Or here's you know, what I uh, recommend that uh, you do or I encourage you to do this. So I call it what's, what needs improved. And that really is just you know, part of my coaching persona. That's the way I approach things. However, I've always said this, like I'm very protective of my authors and my clients. And I've said this for years. I do not let my authors publish junk. Of course, you know, I have to see it uh, in order to establish that. But that sets my, my clients or my potential clients at ease. It's like, listen, I know what I'm doing here and I'm not going to let you embarrass yourself. And embarrass is a huge problem for writers. It's a, it's one of those, you know, monsters in their head that like, oh my gosh, I don't want to be embarrassed in front of my friends and my families and let alone, you know, my colleagues or, or uh, clients or things like that. So this is something I've always said, and it's true. Uh, if I take a look at it, you know, I will give you my honest opinion and tell you what needs to be improved. And then I talk a little bit more, you revise a little bit more. So it's all the process of writing. All of this will make the book better and make your belief in it stronger. See, that's what she doesn't have. She doesn't have the belief in her message. So uh, I want to make sure when I was talking to her and then in this piece to get that through, but that is what will grow. I have a saying that the person who writes the book learns the most from that book. And this is part of it, the belief in the message, the belief in how you are expressing it and it's becoming part of you. Then I say, you will finish it. Then you'll see how it's good and you'll want to share your message. So turning around that um, feeling that she has of, of, of fear or anything, that it's actually become a desire of hers to want to share that message and through websites, webinars, or you can put it in a box and you're you can just put a box of your newly published books in the closet and move on to your next thing. This is an echo of what I call honoring the author within that some people just write books so they can uh, honor themselves. And it's like, Oh, it's something I've always wanted to do. And maybe you don't want to build websites. You don't want to do webinars. So you can just put them in the closet with the satisfaction that you've done it yourself. So I want to give her that out as well, because maybe, you know, maybe deep down, she doesn't want to do webinars and things up to you. It's always, your decision about what you want to do. Got it, I asked. Got it, she said. But I'm just not sure about building the business and offering coaching programs after it's done. Ah, all right, so she didn't get it, okay? <laughs> after my, my little ministerial, um, you know, what my sister calls Buddha Donna message here, she didn't get it because she was still in her head and worried about these things. And uh, so I'm like, okay, now then I need to have the, my reading audience who's reading this take a breath. And what I, in order to do that, I asked a question. And this is something I don't normally do. You do not see a lot of questions in my writing like this. Uh, but I wanted to do it 
to get the audience to see what I was seeing. So I wrote, are you surprised to learn? I have a variation of this conversation a few times a week. Also that again, puts people at ease if they're like her and they're like, yeah, you know, I am worried about those things. Even if you told me not to be worried about those things. So this, uh, this sentence came as a little bit of a break. And again, it was just kind of used. So the readership can, we can all be on the same side in what we're seeing here, but not judging her. That's why I use the word surprised. Then I wrote, most times the future doubt, another name for worry, is about writing a book. Sometimes it's about starting a health program. I have a side business as a health coach, so I wanted to get that in there. Uh, because the person who is looking to lose 100 plus pounds is worried about maintaining the loss. Uh, future doubt is holding them back. So that just shows that this can appear in any form um, <laughs> among, uh, among people who are looking, you know, we say we have goals and things, but you know, do we really, or what are we letting ourselves hold back? And again, it's all going to this theme, doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. Ever will. I could put worry in here, kills more dreams. You know, anxiety kills more dreams, all of that. So then uh, I wrote, maybe you see how insane this is. Maybe you have something you have future doubt about. You gotta let that stuff go, take the first step today. So let that stuff go. I wanted to echo my opening line, let that stuff go. And then uh, take the first step today. I always like to leave on a positive thought, inspirational thought to move forward. So that's a, a little bit of a breakdown. Uh, I could say more, but that's a little bit of a breakdown of the piece I wrote. All right. Uh, then if you're hanging out with me live after I finish this recording, if you have any questions about this, I will be happy to answer them. All right, then uh, I wanna give a, uh, a, a printout <laughs> or a shout out to this week's prompters. Uh, these are the people who turned in uh, their, uh, their answer or their writing for the, the prompt, which was about your superpower. I asked you to name your, your superpower, what makes it a superpower, and tell a little story about it. So I'm not gonna go through and read all these names. Uh, uh, but however, I just wanted to give a, a shout out to these people. Thank you so much for submitting. And uh, I'm going to go over one of the entries that I got, one that I liked a lot, and uh, just give a, a little bit of feedback and then talk about what I liked about this one. And because I'm giving a touch of feedback, I didn't use this person's uh, uh, real name. I used their pseudonym instead. Uh, but that's that's uh, what we have going on here. I did really like this piece a lot. So the older mom writes, Wonder Woman has her bracelets. I have my smile. It's a lot lighter than heavy metal cuffs around my wrists, but just as powerful. I've had this superpower as long as I can remember and never needing any training in how to use it. I don't even know how not to use it. Smiling is as natural to me as breathing. I smile even when I don't know it. I use this superpower to put people at ease and treat them equally, whether it's the superintendent of the school district where I work or the custodian who cleans my room after school, my facial expression greets them both the same way. And if you listened in on our conversations, you would hear that smile in my voice as I'm interacting with them. Because to me, a smile isn't a pleasantry, it's love. And though I may not be able to change the fate of the planet, I can love as many people as possible and make someone's world better if just for a moment. And that makes my superpower stronger than Wonder Woman's gold bracelets any day. All right, I love this one. And uh, I'll just point out here, and you probably already noticed that she tied in Wonder Woman's gold bracelets to the, both the front and the, and the end. And uh, that's really strong writing to be able to do that in a non-clunky way, which uh, the older mom did here. So really good job on that. In fact, I would say that's the, probably one of the strongest parts of this because people pay most attention to introductions and conclusions. So that's very strong writing right there. So a couple of things that I highlighted here, Wonder Woman has her bracelets. I have my smile. It's a lot lighter than heavy metal cuffs around my wrists. See how she describes these bracelets in the second sentence, or the no, third sentence after 
uh, their mention or second sentence after their mention. That's really good because somebody who is not of a certain age might not know what she's talking about. I haven't seen the recent Wonder Woman movie, but I just know the um, Linda, I can't remember her name, but the, the character on television and I can so see these bracelets. So for me, it's easy. I know exactly what she's talking about, but for people who might not, she gives a description here. So very good writing there. And then uh, she names her superpower, I have my smile. And here, uh, I don't even know how not to use it. Well, when you submit these entries, you can't put italics and things in here, but I would italicize this. And uh, that way you saw, or you might've heard when I read it, how I put the emphasis on that word. I don't even know how not to use it. So you'd want that in italics. Again, she didn't have this ability, uh, which is fine. So smiling is as natural to me as breathing. I smile even when I don't know it. I thought maybe this sentence could be changed a little bit. Um, you know, maybe something like my, I smile, I'm kind of thinking on the fly here. I smile or the power of my smile is working even when I don't like literally turn it on, which th that's a longer, clunkier sentence, but that's the, that's the feeling I kind of want to get through here. I want to take this when I don't know it and instead talk about how it's working even if you're not, you're not uh, consciously using it. So maybe you could work with that sentence a little bit. I put these L's in here because that's my, um, it's a throwback to a written, um, a written cue that we use for new paragraph. And so again, in SurveyMonkey, it's tough to put these paragraphs uh, in or to designate where they, where they are and stuff. But this, I think, would break it up pretty nicely. Then uh, she talks about people in her school. These are nice specifics here. It's the bit of the storytelling that I was asking for in this prompt, so that is good. And then I like here how she says my facial expression, a facial expression, because like how many different ways can you say smile? It's tough. So this is nice. So it doesn't make it just redundant. My smile, smile, smile. So she says my facial expression. That's really smart. And then here brings in another sense, our sense of hearing. Hear the smile of my voice. We all know what that sounds like. So uh, fabulous right there to throw in that other sense to bring that in. And then uh, here, because to me a smile isn't a pleasantry, it's love. Nice short sentence. I didn't highlight that, but nice right here. Nice short sentence that comes after these longer sentences that has more impact. And then she says, as though I may not be able to change the fate of the planet. I'm not sure if that's the phrase I would use. Uh, you know, maybe like spread good feeling around the world or something because fate of the planet kind of echoes about like climate change and things. And I don't know, maybe that's what you're after, older mom. But here, I'm just not sure if it quite fits with this idea of love that you're, that you're uh, talking about. Then she says, I can love as many people as possible and make everyone's world better just for a moment. I know that's like something that we do say, you know, the starfish, it matters to that one <laughs> that's thrown in the ocean and things. But I think this would actually be stronger if you just leave it at better. I can love as many people as possible and make someone's world better, period. And then, and that makes my superpower stronger than Wonder Woman's gold bracelets any day. So again, just nice throwback here. Uh, love the ending. And I, I find that's the hardest thing to do sometimes. So really nice job on this one. Just a couple of uh, things that I would look at if I were you, uh, writer, the older mom. And then I will uh, email you and give you an opportunity if you want to submit a revision to this. And then uh, we'll see what we do with that. Okay. All right, okay, I'm at my 20 minutes here, but let me just go through a couple of other things for you and give you uh, next week's writing prompts. So on deck, coming soon, I don't have, a, I don't have a, I'm not sure exactly my title of what I'm calling this project yet, but for right now, I'm calling it the Community Book Project, our big book of inspiration. So if you've been with me for a little while, you know I'm uh, publishing along with uh, members of my Business Authors Association, a community book project. We are just getting ready to publish our sixth edition about independence. And uh, that has prompted me to think of something bigger that we could do with the community book project. So what I'm looking to do 
is uh, start a book project with a group of people and we're going to do 10 themes throughout the book. That's, that's what I'm looking at. You can have a tad longer entries. Uh, if you've taken part of the project, you know I pretty much hold to 200 words and, I, and uh, I'm really a stickler about that, but this one not so much. We're going to call it 200 word-ish. Uh, so you can have a tad longer entries. You're going to get more time to write and revise. It's going to be done in less than a weekend. In fact, we're going to take four or five months to put this book together. There will be weekly reviews by me of people who submit their work, similar to what we're doing here today. You have the ability to revise and resubmit your work. So if you get feedback from me, and then I'll give you a chance to revise it and resubmit it. And that's because I really want this book to be the best of the best. And uh, I, I want it to be a powerful book, a well-written book. There will be awards and prizes for our contributors uh, who do submit and have their submissions accepted for the Community Book Project. And by the way, you will be able to have more than one entry in this book as well if you take part in it. So I'm just getting, I'm getting the information together uh, bit by bit. And uh, I'll be launching this probably within the next week or two, but I just want to give you a heads up. And then also the book is what we're going to do is we're going to publish it actually have kind of like a friends and family publishing a publish of the book December 1st of this year. So that way you can give copies to friends and family at Christmas time and uh, the holiday season. And then we're going to have a worldwide launch on January 1st of 2020, because this is going to be an inspirational book. And, uh, yeah, so that's what's all about that. And uh, again, I'll be sharing more information soon. Just kind of stick around and uh, in the Business Authors Association and on my email list and you'll get word about this, all right? If you want more of this right now, if you're really digging what I'm doing here and you would like me to look at your writing this way, you can apply to join my Editorial Excellence Mastermind. These are small groups of people that I work with to uh, look over writing and so we can learn from each other. And then also these are uh, people who are writing both books and creating business materials like Facebook posts and uh, webinars and things like that. If you're interested in hearing more, just send an email to askdonnak at gmail.com. Do not forget that K on there. Askdonnak at gmail.com. I'll email you back a short video with more information, including the investment levels for this. There's a couple of investment levels and an application. All right. Okay. So finally, this week's prompt. Here it is. Da, da, da. If you weren't in your current job or industry and you could do anything else you wanted to do, what would you be doing and why? And I want the world to be your oyster with this question. I will tell you right now, I would be a rock star. <laughs> All right. And that's about as far away uh, as possible from what I do now. But that's what I would, I would love that uh, be on stage and, and not just, you know, play the drums. I'd be the lead singer uh, right there in front. And, and right now, uh, the only instrument I play is the radio. <laughs> and the only place I sing is in the shower. So in my car. But we're not talking about me. We're talking about you. If you weren't in your current job or industry, and you can do anything else you want in the world, what would you be doing and why? And I think one of the things you might want to be thinking about here is like the passion that you bring to whatever you do, you know, how would you apply that passion to a different area that you're interested in? Or if you're really not into what you're doing right now, then what would you like to do instead and how exciting and would that be for you and what would you, uh, what impact would you be making in the world? All right, I'll send this out. Uh, also in an email, but if you're listening here, you get a heads up. All right. Thank you very much. I'm going to close out the live recording of this and have a chat for the people, uh, with the people who, uh, showed up while a little coffee chat. And, uh, for the rest of you, thank you so much for joining in to give me 200 words. This is Donna Kozik. I'm the founder of mybigbusinesscard.com, creator and leader of the original write a book in a weekend program, community book project, done for you publishing. We got a whole lot going on here at DK Inc. Thanks again for uh, watching and tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the bookstore. <laughs>